So I think the most important thing for people with migraine to understand is that both the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system are heavily involved in uh, starting a migraine attack and continuing a migraine attack and are involved in pieces before the migraine even starts. So that uh, if you divide a migraine into premonitory phases, the aura, the migraine phase, and then the postrome, uh, with modern technology and newer techniques with functional MRI and PET scans, we can find out that there are different parts of the brain, both peripherally and centrally, that are involved in each part of these attacks. The central nervous system has been studied extensively with these newer techniques. And, for example, in the prodrome, pe people will experience yawning or feeling tired or being very light sensitive or sound sensitive before they even have a headache attack. And during that period of time, the imaging of the brain can show us that some parts of the hypothalamus, the brainstem, and even the cortex can be involved, and the thalamus can be involved in the process. When the aura occurs, which we think is more of a cortical spreading depression, and it's usually a visual aura, or it can be a sensory aura, or it can be a language aura. Uh, during that period of time, we usually see cortical changes occurring on these functional MRs and PET scans. And then during the pain attack itself, we see changes that are occurring inside the brain and, uh, and the nerves around the head, and people develop what we call allodynia, where even touching the head will be painful, and that is another process that is occurring both centrally and with connections to the peripheral nervous system. And then after the pain has left, uh, there's a post period, and while we really haven't studied that as much, it's clear that that also has brain connections. So I think the important piece here is that every person who suffers from migraine and those of us who treat people with migraine need to understand that this is a brain deal a central nervous system and a peripheral nervous system combination, uh, and it's real. So chronic migraine is defined, of course, as more than 15 days a month of migraine or migraine-like headaches. And, um, and imaging studies have been done to look at people's brains with chronic migraine. And fortunately, most people have episodic migraine, but a large per percentage of people do have chronic migraine. And some of the studies have shown that the brain is actually a little bit smaller, so there's a change in the cortex, which says our brain has remodeled itself in response to this chronic migraine attack. And that's important because it, you know, because, well, first of all, it's a change in our brain, and none of us want our brain to get smaller or not be functioning properly. So it tells us that it's important for us as practitioners to help treat chronic migraine and get it under control before those changes occur. And then hopefully if we get people treated, if they're in chronic migraine, that we can reverse these changes. And some studies have suggested that, that remodeling can occur and people's brains can go back to normal, and that is the goal, is to get people treated before it's a problem. You know, we've, we've known about treatments for prevention of migraine, medications to prevent, and acute medications. But we're about to undergo kind of a, a mini revolution, if you want to call it, but it's very exciting, uh, where people have found that calcitonin gene-related peptide antagonists and then antibodies to calcitonin, calcitonin gene-related peptide uh, receptors and associated receptors can actually prevent people's migraine attack. And uh, several pharmaceutical companies now are working on these new compounds, which I think are gonna be game changers for a lot of patients. And while we get good results with some treatments for some people, a lot of people don't have relief from those treatments and we need more treatments. In chronic migraine, just as in chronic pain, we're always looking for new treatments that can alleviate suffering of these patients that have not had success with our traditional treatments. And I think this whole class of medication, the, the um, 
immunotherapies as well as the CGRP antagonists are going to open up a whole new avenue for some people with chronic migraine. Well, first, I want to say migraine and chronic migraine are primary care disorders. And we need to deputize every person and provider, primary care, to work with people with migraine. It's more common than asthma and diabetes combined. And a primary care physician would never, or a provider would never think twice about caring for somebody with um, asthma or diabetes. But they always think twice about taking care of somebody with chronic pain or chronic migraine. And it, so it's a, it's a primary care disorder and we need every primary care provider to understand that it's a real condition, it has physiology and anatomy that's anchored in brain function and that um, they too can become treaters and preventers of chronic migraine.